Hi everybody, this is Della from The Beauty of Play. We just finished a microscope lab and I thought I would share that lab with you. So this is my electron microscope. I have a whole post on the microscope, how to choose them, what might be right for you, as well as where to find them that I'll link for you. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the anatomy, for lack of a better word, of the microscope, and then how to go about using it. So on a compound microscope, which is the type of microscope that this is, you have your eyepiece, which is an optical lens. Mine comes out. I'll show it to you. I have two in mine. One is 10 and the other is 16. And I can't remember the name of this. It might be eye tube or barrel, I can't remember. But this is the eyepiece and these are the objective lenses. Usually you have two to three objective lenses. Here I have three and they rotate. I have a four times, a 10 times, and a 40 times. But my 40 times, you can see it is slightly different with this down here. This is an oil immersion lens, and in order to use those, you need a glass slip cover. So that is what these are. I don't know if you can see those. And you need immersion oil, which is what this is. And I'm not gonna use that today, but I am going to go over a little bit and share some of the things that we found. So this is the stage. When you are putting things into focus and out of focus, it's the stage that moves up and down to bring things into focus. And this is the bottom light source. And then I also have a top light source, which I highly recommend. This is just a light pen, but it is built for this. It had, a clip that kept it in place but that broke so we're using a rubber band and you can see I have the light source here and a light source here. On my compound microscope there are two ways to adjust the light that comes in. I have this right below the stage that has a series of holes in it that are different sizes that adjusts the amount of light like an iris that can come up through the stage. And then on the bottom here, let me see if I can turn my microscope around. I have this dial here that controls the brightness of the light. And that's gonna make a big difference. I'm hoping to set up my DSLR which we will lose some magnification for that. But when I set up my DSLR, I'm hoping that you will be able to see some of the things that we are viewing. So we went and collected several things, a few water samples that are over there, flowers, ferns, moss, sand, and we're just looking at different things under the microscope. So let's set up the DSLR. Some time ago, I purchased a kit, an adapter, that allowed my DSLR to hook up to microscope or my telescope. So if you have a DSLR, you can take off the lens of your camera and you can attach this in the same way that you would a camera. I'm gonna turn it this way because it makes me a little bit nervous. And then you can remove the eyepiece from your microscope and place this as the eyepiece in there. Well, hold on a second. Didn't take the entire eyepiece out. And that allows you to take pictures with your DSLR. If you are doing a slice of something like a plant or if you're looking at blood cells or other things, then it's helpful to have the bottom light on because those things are translucent and the light can travel through them. But sometimes when we're looking at something a little larger than that, like in this case, 
parts of a flower, this is part of a plant, or we're looking at an insect or some other things, then that's not quite as helpful. And it can actually obscure what you're looking at. Moving this around a little. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's it backwards in how you move things on a microscope, and so it's a little tricky. Okay, I'm going to work on bringing that into focus. It also has a very small range of focus under this level of magnification, so not everything will be into focus. The large pictures that you see that have everything in focus from a microscope are layered pictures where they're bringing each piece, each plane into focus and then layering those pictures to get a clear picture. specimen is a piece of moss that we collected outside. Look how interesting that is. I'm going to move it around here. There's some really interesting pieces that we found that really show the layering effect, like scale-like effect that the moss has. Bring this into focus. There, you can start to see it there. Move this a little bit to a different area. See those scale-like pieces? Move it back up the plant. And bring this part into focus. sides there. This piece is another piece of moss, but it's a different kind of moss. Look at those hairs. I think I have this at the higher magnification. I'm going to switch the magnification here to a lower one so that we can, there we go, see a little bit more detail. Sometimes your magnification can get too high, so I would just play with it to see what you're looking for. How interesting is that? That tiny little plant. This is a different kind of moss than the moss that we were looking at earlier. This specimen is a piece of sand, or is it some sand that I collected from outside? interesting and I'm going to move it around here see if we can find a clump that's let's look at this one how interesting is that let's see what else we can see here it's just sand that we've run outside if you're getting sand at some of the beaches sometimes you can see tiny, minute little shells, diatoms, if you have a high enough magnification. And my daughter said, rocks. Sand is tiny little rocks, and that is true.
this is the petal of the aster that we had earlier and before we were able to get a good look at the cells from this. I'm going to turn the backlight on. Yeah, there we go. It is gives us a little more, bit more light and then also I'm going to change to a higher level magnification to see if we can see a little bit more. Yeah, can see the actual cells there. With the plant petal. This piece is part of a fern that has spores on the bottom, and what you're seeing there are the spores. Let's increase the magnification a little bit on this one and see if we can get one of those spores focused a little bit. I'm going to try to get it in the center. Actually moved it out of the lens. And then we'll need to bring it back into focus. How interesting is that? sample that I'm going to try to do is a water sample and we've taken these water samples I'm using a special slide that has a well on it and then I'm going to put a glass slipper over that well I want to make sure which way you really shouldn't touch these but I'm trying to figure out which way the well goes so I'm going to drop a piece of water a drop of water into that well and put a glass slip this has been sitting here for a little bit, so my hope is that things have gone to the bottom and we'll be able to see something. Don't want to put that back in there. I'm going to take a glass slip. This is actually more than one. Let me see if I can get just one. Here we go. And I'm going to put it over here so that edge is wet and then drop it down there. Did well. So I don't have any bubbles in it. And then I'm going to switch to the lowest level magnification and put that under the microscope. So I'm looking here and I see a few pieces of algae, but they're pretty small and I'm not able to magnify them any greater because I'm on the highest level of magnification without using oil. This is exciting. There's some little creature. Oh, it's going out of the field of view. There, that is moving through the water. You see that? I'm not sure what that little guy is. There's another one. 